Welcome to The Rant. I'm your host, Herman James, and today we'll be talking about customer service. I've spent over a decade in the hospitality industry. I have been on the front lines dealing with people and customers face to face and over the phone. I have heard and seen just about everything. There's not much out there in most industries that would surprise me nowadays about people, what they do, how they act, or what they're going to say. That being said, I've also mastered the art of politely telling rude people to fuck off and for them to assume that they didn't really hear what they thought they heard and thought it was kind of amusing. When I worked in hospitality, if there was an issue or a problem, you try to meet that head on. You try to service the customers with a great experience so that they would return and tell their friends, word of mouth being a great advertising tool. However, things have changed. No longer do you have an individual that has a legitimate problem calling in or coming into an establishment and trying to resolve the issue. Now you have people making up problems, try to get something for free or try to get something given to them for free for absolutely no reason. You've got these same people calling up and being a complete dick to people that they don't even know for reasons that are unbeknownst to the person that they're on the phone with or they're in front of. This is what customer service has become. It's no longer something that is greeting Mr. and Mrs. Smith for coming to the establishment and welcoming them back, knowing what they want to order, knowing where they want to sit, knowing them and their families because you've spent so much time with them and they're good individuals. They love you and you love them back, both as a patron and as a person. Now it's how do I get in and out from talking to this customer without getting in trouble, without them yelling at me in front of my boss, or putting on a bad Yelp review that's going to A, cause me to lose a shift, and B, potentially cost me my job. People nowadays seem to think that if they just put it on the internet, or if they call and leave a bad message, they're going to be compensated. And unfortunately, that's become the norm for both the customer and even the company. Some companies don't even respond back to you in any sort of regard unless you put on a review on the internet somewhere that they can look at and try to resolve because now everyone can see it. However, there are the instances now when you actually have an issue or you have a problem with an establishment or a company and you need to have the issue resolved, now it's become the fact that you have to fight for your ability to get the product you ordered, the food you ordered, or the customer service that you were expecting to have because now no one believes you that you've actually not received an item, not received the proper order, or that the actual worker of that facility was mean to you. And maybe you just misinterpreted what that person said. If any of you have had to deal with this, and I'm sure tons of you have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you get something incorrectly delivered to you for your front door from Amazon, you then have to go through a little bit of a rigmarole of telling them what you ordered, why you didn't get it. And most of the time, it's been pretty easy with them. I have to admit, Amazon's probably one of my more favorite customer service uh, options to deal with. Even though it's outsourced, it's not a big issue because they're willing to make things right and on top of that, if it was a real issue, they will send you the product again at no cost. They'll overnight it. It'll even credit your account some of uh, the money that they'll have from Amazon. It's like a gift card or a comp of some sort. So you actually can buy more items with it because they're trying to help you become a repeat customer. That being said, that process become has become so abused over the years that now you have to be afraid that if you call and do that, and you actually have a legitimate issue, they're gonna revoke your membership because things aren't exactly the same anymore. You have people that are you know, milking this system. They're saying they didn't get items that they got, trying to say that it was never delivered even though it's been confirmed that it's delivered and now the delivery drivers are taking pictures of it delivered to your doorstep. So 
it's become bastardized to the point that your word is no longer valid in this world, especially to some of these major big box companies. You have to prove and fight for your right to get what you paid for initially. My own experience was having a belt that I ordered that had a lifetime warranty on it, just no frills, leather belt. Well, the backing started coming off and started splintering, and I spent 45 minutes on the phone explaining to customer service what a lifetime warranty meant and how to find it on the product that they have listed on their website. After the time was up, the guy finally agreed with me, screenshot what he saw on that screen, and then gave me a replacement product for what I had purchased. I shouldn't have had to go through 45 minutes to do this, but unfortunately because people have taken advantage of all these kind of facets and all these avenues and the nicety of companies, now we're required to. It comes to the same idea that in the food industry, if you're going out to eat and something were wrong, you used to be able to say, hey, I ordered this this way, not this way. You know, medium rare versus medium or well done versus rare or vice versa. And now when your food comes and it's incorrect, you have to explain why it's incorrect and that you didn't order it that way. Someone misunderstood something and you've ordered this numerous times, but you have to go through this entire explanation to people why it's improperly cooked or it's the wrong product. Most restaurants used to take your word for it, have it redone, bring you some appetizer or something in its place while it's cooking to help alleviate that amount of time and to bridge that gap between you eating things and your other food being ready for you and being properly brought back out to you. But because people have pulled hair off their head and put it on the food when there's one bite left to get a fully comped meal, or millennials that will sit there and take goddamn pictures of their food post it on every piece of social media they can possibly find and then complain that their food's cold that was delivered five minutes ago while they're taking pictures and posting on the internet is ridiculous. You're the dumb fuck that's taking pictures of eating your food. No one cares about what you're eating or where you're eating it. Get over yourself. You're not that important. No one actually cares. And if you were to go to the extent of taking a picture of your food as you got it, why aren't you taking a picture of it when you shit it out and you put it in the toilet? You might as well get it from both ends. Give the whole journey of what you just ate. Quit being a prick, put your camera phone down, and eat your food. And then here's another idea. When the food is great and you have wonderful customer service, put that on Yelp. Put that on the company's website. Name the server that did great for you. Write a letter to the company saying how great that person was, that food was, instead of just bitching and pissing and moaning that you messed something up and then can't take the blame for it because you didn't know that the food was going to come out that hot and when you took a picture of it, it wouldn't stay hot enough for you to post it on Instagram and MySpace. That's right, I said MySpace. Because you want to make sure everyone sees exactly what you're eating. No one cares. You're the asshole that is costing someone their job and their shift because you couldn't eat your goddamn food on time. Figure your shit out. Quit taking pictures and put the food in your mouth. You have people that have to worry about their jobs because you've got individuals calling up and saying horrible things to them over the phone. And the phone calls are being recorded on the company side. Now, the employee is not able to say anything rude, even though you have just completely reamed them, talked horrible things about their family, which has nothing to do with whatever it is you're calling about, and they're still nice to you because you're a royal asshole. Customer service is no longer about servicing the customer. It's about saving your job and trying to alleviate someone's anger. One thing I've learned from being face to face with the majority of people is that people just want to vent. If you let them vent, let them talk, majority of the time, that's all they needed and wanted. You can get away with having to walk away after that or trying to appease them in a small way. But if you let people talk, let them vent, that helps. That being said, there's people that are just angry to be angry. There's no reason for it. Taking your anger out on someone else that's trying to help you. When you call customer service, when you go into a restaurant, when you go into a store and you ask for a manager, if you calmly tell them 
what was going on and what's going to happen. I bet you have a better response than you do if you walk in there and start screaming and yelling at individuals. I have an anger issue. I get very angry very quickly when things don't go my way, and I understand that. However, I've also worked in the industry long enough to understand that there is going to be someone that's going to be there to help me. There is a way to resolve the issues that I want to get resolved without having to talk to three and four and five different people. So I specifically ask for the general manager, the manager, that the head of the company, not the person that's the key manager, the person on the floor right then and there. I talk to the head of the head. I deal with exactly just that. And I talk to them calmly. They resolve my issue. And more times than not, they'll actually give me something for being nice and for them having an error. And nine times out of 10, that's not required. That's not requested. But if it is something that's on there, that's great. And I appreciate everything that they do because they deal with people all the time that are yelling at them nonstop. For those of you that are listening that don't have a job, you get yelled at by random people you don't know on a daily basis. Think about how much that would make your day be a little more hectic. Every time you answer the phone, you know you're going to get cursed at, yelled at, screamed at, and have to know exactly what that person is talking about right off the bat, even though you have no clue who that person is or what their issue is. You have to be a detective to figure everything out, calm them down, and then try to keep calm yourself. It is absolutely asinine. It's horseshit in every way. And then people get mad at you for not knowing what they're doing. When the reality is, the people that are these angry individuals that are trying to get free things that they don't deserve to get, they're looking for a free ride or they have bad problems with whatever it is, their own self-esteem, their tiny dicks, their smelly vag, whatever it might be, and they're taking it out on everybody else. Customer service used to be the nicety that you get. When you talk to someone, when you go in, and things are good. Like I said, when you meet an old couple that comes into a restaurant, and you know them very well, and they get the same booth, they get the same food, they share the same things, and they're nice, they're cordial, they get customer service, they get smiles, doors get open for them, they're nice individuals. It wasn't supposed to be something that is just there to resolve a problem. But now, not only do you have to figure out how to resolve the problem, the person calling you on the phone or in the store already has a secondary problem, and you have to figure out what that is. And the problem that they're putting out and yelling at, that fire is going to be put out because other people are hearing it, and that's going to cause more problems. It's ridiculous. I do have to say that one of my favorite types of customer service is going to be the ones where they're always happy to talk to you. And I was one of those individuals where when there's an angry person yelling at me, I would smile at them. They would get even angrier because I was smiling and I wouldn't say anything, which apparently got them even more angry. I knew what I was doing and I knew how to do it because what was going on was they were getting more angry that I wasn't resolving their issue. I wasn't getting mad at their issue. I was just sitting there letting them talk. I was smiling as they were going on and on and on and on about what they were doing. They got pissed more. Eventually, by the time that they've exhausted themselves by bitching and pissing and moaning, I'd already known what to do and how to resolve it, but I let them burn themselves out. Basically, pull a rope-a-dope. Let them spin themselves out, maul the anger and pissing and moaning. Then I slowly and calmly gave them a resolution. And that was my favorite thing to do. Let you go on and on and on instead of cutting you off, talking to you, and figuring out. Didn't care. I already knew how to fix the problem before I got to you, but you wanted to vent about it. Great. Fantastic. On the flip side, most of the times I never had issues with individuals. My own customers are always happy to see me. And even if they never knew me, I told them jokes. I cracked ones with them, about them, about myself, things that are now considered inappropriate. Racial jokes, gender jokes, sexuality jokes, sex jokes, and that made them feel more comfortable and at home and comfortable with me. And that was fantastic. I've had numerous friends of mine come into restaurants I worked at and country clubs I worked at listen to me and ask how I get away with what I said. And it's because I said it with a smile. I was able to incorporate my customers with me in the stories I was telling and the jokes I was doing. And anytime that there was an issue or 
anytime there was an ability or a way to give something free to the customer, I would always do it. I was a manager of a country club, so when young couples or old couples would get married and they were nice to me, I had made sure that I had a bottle of champagne on ice in their bedroom with two glasses waiting for them as soon as they got there. If they weren't drinkers but the husband was a smoker, I would bring him a little uh, cigar to have in his room and have whatever the wife wanted for. If they were tokers, I would make sure I had a few joints ready for them to go because they made me happy knowing that I didn't have to deal with angry people, so I want to make sure that they were happy knowing that I was happy with them. That worked out well because I had numerous repeat customers. I had word of mouth going beyond the people that I would normally serve, and seeing people outside of that environment, they'd see me again and tell me how great things were and how much I made their night or their evening or their wedding even better, which made me feel great because honestly, I was just doing my job and I really enjoyed what I did. Now, there's other times where I'll be a complete ass to you and people think it's absolutely hilarious because again, do it with a smile, do it with a little bit of pizzazz and people think it's hilarious. They get involved with you they kind of razz you back and they go to town with it. That's how the restaurant dicks works. That's how they get their customers involved. They put a douche hat on you. They are hung over when they're talking to you. They tell you to shut the fuck up and they're getting paid big money to do it. People go there because of that kind of ambiance and what's going on there. Unlike Twin Peaks, you're going there because it sounds exactly like what it is. It's big chested women in tiny shirts. That's what you're paying for. They'll smile, nod, and be happy with you. But you have to deal with the assholes that are handsy, that are perverts, and that are dicks. So it, it's a double-edged sword. You're going for one thing, but you have to deal with another. And people in general just don't know how to interact in a social environment anymore. If the people get their heads out of their phones and look up at the couch to talk to people instead of hiding behind keyboards, things would be different. But now we've got an entire generation or two of individuals that have grown up behind computer screens on keyboards and no longer socially interact with people. So they don't know social norms. They don't know how to interact with people on a regular basis. And they don't know how to deal with their own anger or issues. They never had a problem that mommy and daddy didn't wipe their ass for and figure out how to resolve for them. So how they resolve it, they bitch and piss and moan and scream and cry and tell you how bad you are because mommy and daddy couldn't fix their issue and they couldn't fix themselves, so therefore, it must be your fault. It's not right. That's not customer service. You deserve to be hung up on or told to get the fuck out of the establishment because you're a little petulant child. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter what age, gender, sex, anything. None of that matters. If you're a prick, you're a prick. There's no stereotype to one or the other. It doesn't matter. You need to grow up and be a normal person. You know where you can go and customer service is always nice until you go a little bit too far? Strip clubs. Strippers are the nicest people in the world. They'll listen to you. They'll let you talk to them about your family, your wife, your husband, your kids, your job, whatever you want to do. You can talk to them. You can say all the weird things you want to and they'll smile and keep rubbing up on you. But that moment you put your hands on them, a big balancer is taking you out back and throwing you out the back door. Now, what I don't see a lot of are people coming back to a strip club to yell at this gigantic bouncer about being rude to them. So is that what we have to do? Do we have to put very large muscular men and women in front of Kohl's, in front of a restaurant, in front of Walmart, so you don't yell and bitch and piss and moan at people and get your problems resolved the correct way? Because if that's what has to be done, that's something we should look into. But really, what should be happening is mommy and daddy should be spanking their children that don't get their way. So that when they grow up, they know how to interact with people. They know that things aren't always going to go their way. And know that when they step out of line, there is a correction to be done. That's what needs to happen. And unfortunately, people are afraid to do that right now. That's not how this environment works. not how this world works. People are now letting their children run their world run their lives, which isn't helping these children because by the time they're growing up and they have a problem that they've never had to deal with, 
they're going to have the same temper tantrum they had when they were a little child because that got them their way then. Why not get them their way now? Again, when did customer service stop being about customer service and start being about dealing with a dick for being a dick's sake? I know that there are still great people out in this world that will still go out to an establishment and be nice and cordial and gracious to individuals as well as the employees within those facilities that know how to interact with people and treat customers. There are still wonderful people in this world that will write great reviews on social media, on the company's websites, Google, and Yelp. There's also great people that will make sure they tell your manager that you did great by them. You were a fantastic individual. There's also those fun people that like to have fun when they're out and will flirt with you and that you flirt back with them. Hell, there's even some of those people that let you take them home. They're fun to have around. I know plenty of people that have done that in country clubs, especially during weddings. The bridesmaids are always a fun group after they've been drinking all night to come and flirt and hang out with the bartenders. Can't have a problem with that. However, we live in an era right now that is dictated by reviews. Yelp reviews, Amazon reviews, Google reviews. These are something that is going to dictate the company's corporate response to individuals. This is going to be what is going to dictate people's jobs, people's shifts, and corporate responses to particular individuals in terms of both their review and who they're reviewing. Yelp is nice enough to put up horrible reviews that are placed on an establishment and then charge the establishment to have horrible reviews removed so a new people go on to that website to find out who's there, who's working there, what food it is, or what to order, or how the establishment actually runs, that they don't have to see these horrible reviews put up by horrible people. They hold companies ransom, which is a fucked up thing to do, seeing as they didn't ask to be put on this in the first place. You've got Google reviews of people that put things up there that you're gonna read and see regardless. You've also have ones that are on Amazon, where you can see people who are going to shit on someone's product because they are the competitor and that can't be removed either. So now you have to wean through the horrible reviews with the good reviews, find verified purchases because there are just a bunch of fucking assholes out there that know that this is being dictated this way, that the company is being run by reviews. Corporate is running this review system and reading it. And the reality comes down to there is always going to be a competitor that's going to find a way to bring you down. And I understand that. And that's going to be a here or there thing. But the major thing we're having is the individuals in this world that are taking on their own free will to go on there and piss on people, piss on companies, and piss on products because they have a fucked up life. Their tiny dicks and their fucking douchey vag has a big issue with the fact that they can't get what they want. They're not where they want to be at life. And along the way, when they had temper tantrums as a kid, mommy and daddy didn't teach them right from wrong and how to deal in social atmospheres and in public because mommy and daddy didn't want to look like a fucking asshole for spanking their dickhead of a child. Well, you know what? Spank that child. It's okay. It's not illegal to discipline your child. And honestly, they'd be grateful for it because at this point, they're nothing. They are the people in the world that everybody hates because you didn't do your job correctly. Now, let's give little Johnny and little Stevie and Susie an iPad because they're crying and they're fussing. I don't want a parent. Fuck off. You had fun making the child, now be a parent. It's not hard to create a child. It's hard to raise the right children the right way. Don't give them iPads and iPhones and technology because you don't want to parent them or you're too tired to parent them. Teach them how to deal with problems they're going to have. Teach them how to be people that other people want to be around in the environment, in society. Teach them how to interact. This is what you need to do. If this was done primarily, we wouldn't have as many fucking idiots in this world that we have now that don't know how to do things and how to solve their own problems without being a complete and fucking idiot who instead of trying to resolve a problem head on, take to social media to shit on someone because that's what they want to do. 
because that's all they know how to do because they're afraid of confrontation. If they see you face to face and they say something, you might say something back. And that's scary. I don't want to be scared. I don't, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be the guy behind the keyboard, behind a telephone that I can tell you to go fuck off because you can't reach the phone and touch me. Well, you know what? You have to step outside sometime. You have to interact sometime. And you're probably that douchebag that's always sitting there on the phone looking down at it while you talk to someone in public. Put your shit away. Deal with your problems and deal with your own issues. Because the way that people are doing it nowadays is making things horrible. Customer service was supposed to be something that was brought to you to make you feel better about what you were doing. And if there was an issue, people would resolve it correctly. They would make sure the issues were resolved, the product you ordered, the food you ordered was given to you in the timely manner, the proper fashion, and if they couldn't do it in that, they would compensate you in a way that would do it. But now because these little fucktards don't know how to deal with their own problems, we have to go through a rigor morale and an obstacle course just to get things done the proper way. Because little Stevie and little Susie didn't get parented correctly when they were kids, and now they're fucktards as adults and millennials and can't figure out what they've got to do with their lives to get the right things done. Long story short, quit being a fucking asshole, talk to someone normally, deal with your issues that you have about your own self somewhere else, not in public, because no one else gives a fuck about your problems. Deal with them yourself, quit taking them out on other people, and let the people that you are harassing in person or over the phone go, so they can do their jobs, deal with people that they want to deal with, and move on with their day in life, instead of having to sit there, talk to you, and lament about their job because they deal with people like you every fucking day. And if that makes you feel better about a person because you are that person, making people feel bad and bitching and pissing and moaning to people to get free shit because your life sucks, here's my way of solving that for you. Go online, watch some fucking you porn, Pornhub, get some lotion or some fucking batteries, and jack off until you can't move your arms anymore. That way you stop typing, you stop calling people, and you stop with fucking life until you're in such a fucking comatose level that you're actually a nice individual to be around. Until it builds back up, and then you feel that anger come back on, double click that mouse, beat the meat, get the fuck out of society because honestly, you're probably the person who wants to deal with in the first place, and you're probably not getting laid. Well, that's all the time I've got for this episode of The Rant. Feel free to email me at therantwithhermanjames at gmail.com. Share me on Instagram and on Facebook. Find me on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And until next time, have a great day.